The National Rifle Association's annual convention begins today in Houston. It's happening fewer than 300 miles from Uvalde, where 19 children and two children, and rather two teachers, were killed Tuesday in an elementary school shooting. Officials in Houston are ramping up security as mass protests are expected at the meeting. So our chief election and campaign correspondent, Robert Costa, is outside the convention center this morning. Robert, good morning. Good morning. Despite calls from activists to cancel the event, the NRA is carrying on, setting the stage for a collision as protesters also flock to the city. The city of Houston is on edge ahead of the NRA convention. Democratic Mayor Sylvester Turner said the city has to honor its contract with the NRA, no matter how he feels. There comes a point in time when people have to recognize that it's disrespectful to be talking about guns when 19 kids have been killed. For the Republican Party, the moment is a reckoning with its long-held alliance with the NRA on gun rights. Several leading Republicans promised to attend, including former President Donald Trump and Texas Senator Ted Cruz, both plan to speak today. Governor Greg Abbott is no longer attending in person, pre-recording a video message instead. Guns are never a responsibility. A gun is a tool. Despite the mass shooting in Uvalde, attendees are doubling down on their stance on gun rights. It wasn't guns that did it. It was a person. We have a problem where people who are getting mentally ill are not being, they're falling through the cracks. A recent CBS News poll found that among Republicans, the majority, nearly 75 percent, want laws covering the sales of guns to remain the same or be made less strict. And when it comes to political influence, gun right groups spent $15.8 million on lobbying last year, five times more than what gun control groups spent. But the NRA has faced challenges in recent years, following scandals at its highest ranks. And it's now spending less on political campaigns. While guns will be allowed into this event, they won't be for Trump's speech due to Secret Service regulations. Oh, that's very interesting. Thanks for that clarification, because I think a couple of days ago there had been a story floating around that guns were not allowed. They are allowed, with the exception of uh, the former president's speech. Set the scene for us. I, I saw a few people going into the convention center behind you. What does it look like there? Does it look like police are preparing for protesters? There are barricades set up here, and there's a park area, and we're standing right in front of this free zone they're trying to have between protesters and those who are against the protesters. Police are obviously setting up an arrangement where they hope there's some distance between the two different protests, the two different sides of the gun debate. It's a little bit of a city on edge feeling here in Houston this morning. This is a city where many of the attendees we've spotted already yesterday and today are walking around with firearms. Uh, open carry is allowed here in Texas, and many people are doing so. Um you know, of course, what we've been talking about all morning is that this is happening some 300 miles from Uvalde. Um, just, I'm wondering if any of the people that you've spoken to have reacted to the fact that this convention is, is still being put on despite sort of the carnage and the loss in this small town not too far away. We spent a lot of time, a few hours uh, after we got in yesterday, talking to attendees as they started to come here near the convention center in downtown Houston. And to a person, uh, no retreat in terms of the position on gun rights or their position on holding this convention here in Houston. There's a belief among NRA attendees that this is a group of people uh, that deserves to meet in their eyes, despite what happened in Uvalde and they are going to continue to meet. There's not a lot of discussion about maybe holding uh, this event another time or delaying it. Um, I know that several musicians who were scheduled to perform during the convention have already canceled. Um, the former president, Donald Trump, is not canceling. He will be speaking. Any idea what he'll be talking about? I know sometimes his speeches can be a little freewheeling. The former president will speak later today, probably in the late afternoon, early evening. What we've spotted here so far are a lot of people wearing Trump 2024 shirts, Trump 2024 hats. Among the NRA attendees, there's a real fervor 
for the former president to return to the political fray to consider another presidential run. We asked attendees what do they want to hear from him, and they said they want to hear a firm defense of gun rights, the NRA position, which Trump backed when he was president, and they'd also like to hear him talk about moving closer to a presidential run. It's clear that at least among this constituency, many of them, most of them Republicans, they still very much like Donald Trump. You know, can you give me an idea of just the influence that the NRA has at this point? We know the organization is dealing with a declining membership, declining revenue, uh, legal uh, attacks coming out of New York. It filed for bankruptcy in order to sort of protect from some of those legal attacks. Can you give us a snapshot of the overall health of this organization? It's an intriguing and important question. I've covered the NRA and the guns rights issue and the gun debate since 2009. So for over a decade, I've been tracking this group. And when I first started covering these issues back at the dawn of the so-called Tea Party era, the Obama era on the Democratic side, the NRA was seen as a very strong organization then and now led by Wayne LaPierre, its chairman and CEO. But we've seen that influence wane as a group, as an advocacy group. But we, what we haven't seen wane in the Republican Party is the NRA's position on gun rights. So while the NRA is in battle facing legal challenges across the board, its position remains very popular within the Republican Party. And that's an important distinction, because while the NRA is having its struggles, you don't see Republican politicians, from the rank and file activists to the leaders of the party, breaking away in any sense from the NRA position on guns, which is to be averse to new restrictions. Hmm. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, Robert, thank you very much.